Honorable Vikram Barrett, Minister of Natural Resources, Mr. Alistair Rutledge, CEO, President of ExxonMobil Guyana, Dr. Peter Ramsarup, Head of Go Invest Guyana, Mr. Eldon Marks, CEO of V75, and the only lady at the head table, and by no means the least person there, is Kiana Wilberg, CEO of the Guyana Energy Conference and Supply Chain Expo. I also want to specifically recognize Mr. Lu Shaoshang, who's the president of Sino Petroleum Guyana Limited, and who is, as you know, one of the co-venturers in the Stabro block. And then to every one of us else who's here, special invitees and members of the media, very good morning to you. Our apologies for the delayed start this morning. Um, today is the first day of school in Guyana, so some people had a bit of a challenge uh, getting in here. And it's also education month for a lot of obvious reasons. And that, too, is a good thing, but presents its own challenges. And then it's also the start of Amrindan Heritage Month, which I believe was launched a few minutes ago at the Umanayana. Minister Barrett, who's here with us, was just speaking over there. I'm a tad disappointed that he left his regalia and just came to us the way he is, but we're happy to have him this morning. We are very excited to be here today for the launch of the Guyana Energy Conference and Supply Chain Expo 2025. For those of you who've been tracking this conference and expo over the last three years, you know that the expo has grown exponentially from year to year, and has grown by every metric. We've had more people participating in the conference. We've had more speakers at the conference with a range of expertise. The number of exhibitors and sponsors all continue to grow. The exponential growth of this conference continues, as you will hear today, and we are grateful that we continue to make this contribution to the energy conversations in Guyana, and that we've been able to expand into the broader conversations about the nature and character of Guyana's development. So we're pretty excited about today and we're glad that you've taken the time out to share this with us. I want to give a special thank you right at the beginning to the members of the media who are with us today. The opening remarks will be delivered by our CEO, Kiana Wilberg. And while no one at this table needs any real introduction, I wanted to make an exception for Kiana, given that she's in this new role I want to give her some time to recognize that when she gets here, the cameras and the media will be facing her rather than the other way around. Um, Kiana has had uh, just over a decade of a distinguished career as a journalist. I, I, I think I could boast that I have known her and worked with her for all of those 10 years. And in an industry now where people don't spend a long time, Kiana has put in significant time done considerably good work, and in recent times, since the advent of oil and gas, she spent a lot of time honing her skills and deepening her knowledge in the industry. And so I believe it's a very interesting outcome that she is now serving as CEO of this conference, and I believe that that experience would serve her well, and it's my delight to introduce her to make opening remarks to you today, Kiana Wilberg. Good morning, everyone. I'd like to stand on all protocols already observed. It is my distinct pleasure to welcome you all to the official launch of the Guyana Energy Conference and Supply Chain Expo 2025, which will be held at the Marriott Hotel from February 18th to the 21st, 2025. The fourth installment of this premier event will be held under the theme, Connecting the Dots, Integrating the Future. While the registration process is expected to be open soon, the event is already poised to attract at least 7,000 delegates, feature 180 plus booths, 
and host a 70 plus distinguished speakers. Even prior to our launch today, I am pleased to share that we have 82 companies on board with over 100 boots sold. Our sponsors thus far include ExxonMobil Guyana, Technic FMC, Noble, Stena Drilling, Expro Guyana Inc., BK Group of Companies, and MECP Sales and Services. Permit me to extend special commendation to ExxonMobil Guyana, which has returned for a fourth consecutive year as our title sponsor. Your support has ensured that this flagship event remains a staple in the calendars of leading authorities from over 40 countries. While spots are also very limited at this point in time, the Secretariat wishes to express its heartfelt thanks for the support received thus far from hundreds of industry stakeholders, as well as key government agencies. For Conference 2025, we, we intend to continue our leadership in presenting Guyana as not just an oil and gas proposition, but a growth pole for multiple industries. Importantly, our conference will continue to lead critical discussions which remind us that the road to sustainability is a shared responsibility. Hence our theme, connecting the dots, integrating the future. Some of the key topics that will feature on the agenda include a just energy transition, financing sustainable development initiatives, developing a workforce for the future, building resilient supply chains, and promoting the advancement of women in this industry. In addition to the main four-day event, we will introduce parallel sessions that delve into technical and specialized topics relevant to industry professionals. These sessions will cover areas such as renewable energy integration, supply chain optimization, the application of AI to improve efficiency and resilience, and so much more. The Secretariat also plans to host a number of new initiatives for 2025 conference. These include an energy run slash walk and an essay competition, the latter of which will be done in collaboration with the Ministry of Education. We will also host a Taste of Guyana event which will introduce delegates to authentic Guyanese cuisine. This will be done in collaboration with our ministries of culture and tourism. We will also use this platform to invite delegates to not just come for conference, but also stay for Mashramani. This will be in keeping with our drive to be on the front line of showcasing the socioeconomic and cultural strengths of our country. We are also pleased, pleased to share that a conference village will be another major attraction. This event will feature a farmer's market and arts and crafts vendors. The Secretariat is also in discussions with the Ministry of Education to explore opportunities for broadcasting key segments of the conference to remote regions. This initiative in particular aims to ensure that even the most distant communities can participate in and benefit from the insights and discussions shared during this event. There will be separate launch events for these new initiatives later this year, during which time more details will be released to the media. To ensure that we continue to drive the discourse on national development and industry-leading trends, we have created the Energy Perspectives podcast. Established in 2023 with Ramta Production in 2024, the podcast serves as a safe space for discussion with industry stakeholders. So far, we've had over 50 episodes to date and nearly 20,000 listeners across various media platforms. The podcast, I'm proud to say, has emerged as a trusted provider of reliable insights and critical sectoral updates. Esteemed guests on our podcast have include the president, Dr. Ifran Ali, former Colombian president, Ivan Duque, and industry leaders from ExxonMobil, CNOC, and SBM Offshore. 
Under the visionary leadership of the Secretariat's chairman, Mr. Anthony White, management has also embarked on a comprehensive digital transformation, starting with a complete overhaul of our website. The new corporate look not only reflects the modern and forward-thinking ethos of this event, but it also enhances user experience, making information more accessible and engaging for all stakeholders. In addition to the revamped website, we will introduce a new conference app to enhance the registration process for users, ensuring that attendees can seamlessly manage their conference experience from start to finish. The Secretariat will also launch today a news app and podcast app. This platform is designed to deliver reliable and up-to-date industry information. It is poised to be an essential tool for stakeholders, offering insights and analysis on the latest trends and developments within the energy sector. Our exclusive digital partner, V75, will expound in greater detail later this morning on these new applications. In conclusion, the 2025 Guyana Energy Conference and Supply Chain Expo is set to be our most impactful yet serving as a critical platform for advancing discussions on sustainability, innovation, and inclusive growth. As we navigate the dynamic landscape of the global energy sector, I am pleased to say that this event is no, no, no doubt poised to become the Super Bowl of regional energy conferences, doing its part to leave a roadmap behind for future generations to follow on how to grow and promote sustainable economies. Thank you all for your continued support and commitment. We look forward to welcoming you in February 2025. I'd like to also welcome the Honorable Robson Ben. Minister of Home Affairs, who uh, just arrived at the event. It's now my pleasure to invite the president of ExxonMobil Guyana, Mr. Alistair Rutledge, to deliver remarks. I have a feeling you're a four-year veteran, right? Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, if you would permit me to stand on the established protocols. It's with great pleasure uh, that we are proud as ExxonMobil Ghana to uh, confirm our title sponsorship, as uh, Kiana said, for the fourth uh, consecutive year. We are uh, very excited, looking forward to the event in February of 2025. Um, that will be the fourth edition. And as a sp sponsor, what we're very excited about is that each year, this conference continues to build on the prior years. It becomes larger, it becomes more effective at doing what we're looking for it to do. And it also comes every year with a fresh look at what is, what is the focus for the year. Um, it's for us a great platform to bring the business sector, the private sector, both local and international together with the policy makers, with academics, to have a really strong conversation about the issues of the day, uh, and in particular about energy and the uh, development of the nation of Guyana, but also the part that it's playing in the region um, and beyond. And so we're, we're excited to be that sponsor again for the title sponsor for 2025. We look forward to the engagement that we anticipate will be even healthier than in prior years. And, and to exploring the theme of connecting the dots and uh, integrating the future, which is very consistent with the way ExxonMobil is uh, looking at the future and the challenges that we all face in continuing to deliver affordable energy, reliable energy supplies for development of society, but doing it in a way which is more and more sustainable for the future. And so, really excited by the theme of next year's conference, excited to see all the people coming to Georgetown to enjoy not just the conference, but all the other benefits that we heard Kiana talk about. And most importantly, to engage in the dialogue and, and to further the discussion and plot the, uh, the future 
for the industry in general, but specifically here in Guyana. Thank you. We're going to pivot to the Guyana Office for Investment, and uh, Dr. Peter Ramsarup would be speaking from the table. He has temporarily set aside his ability to come to podiums with alacrity. Um, Peter, I, I believe that that would do nothing to diminish your passion for the subject at hand, and so I invite you to make your remarks now. I appreciate you not um, coming up with a story that would have... I actually have come up with it, but I'm not going to tell it now. ...would have uh, had me answering other questions today. But it's a pleasure to be here at the fourth edition of this um, conference, honorable ministers uh, that are present. Uh, you know, what is exciting over the last four years in Guyana, and we've all been here, a lot of us, has experienced the real development, the transformation that has taken place. You know, when His Excellency uh, was campaigning, uh, along with many of us, you know, we presented, you know, what the, the political term called manifesto in Guyana. And it outlined so many initiatives that we wanted to accomplish in the five years of government, uh, the first five years of government. And when you look at what has transpired today, and you look at when this energy conference started and, and what was its, its uh, directives, uh, you would have put the two together to see many of those things, you know, we are you know, almost at a, uh, 100% getting their uh, completion. But what has been important over the last four years, given this was initially an oil and gas conference, a lot of focus was on the oil and gas sector. Uh, you know, we saw the GDP growth went from 62% in one year, this first quarter to 49%. But what was most fascinating about the last four years, given that the first four years was oil and gas, was our non-oil industry grew at 11% last year, first quarter this year, over 12%, the president announced uh, recently. So it described why the conference has added this supply chain component. I know I see the head of, of a major asset group uh, CEO of Qatari in here. You know, when the Qataris announced, for example, a 350 million investment in, in uh, the lakeside or the hotel side resort, uh, recently in Escribo Coast, for example, uh, this weekend had the Chambers of Commerce, which many went to, present have a stadium being built. But what little do you know that we have over close to 200 new rooms of hotels being built in Anna Regina. We just announced uh, in, in Barbies, for example, a 150 room hotel going up right next to the stadium. When you think of the energy cost coming down in 2025 as promised by our, our government, what happens 25 and beyond when our president takes office again? It's the, it's the shifting of the next phase of Ghana development. That's that new wave, which is some of both the small, medium, and large projects. But when you think of cheaper energy, you think of bauxite fines, you think of alumina, when you think of glass, you think of, 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 of silica sand, you think of glass, the gold refinery. Those things are, are things that we dreamt about. When you think of deep ports, the... the connection to northern Brazil. When you look at a relationship with the DR, we've got a chamber's president in, in our midst. And what we're building between the DR and Guyana, it tells how fast and how far Guyana has come. And the transformation the president, I believe, has achieved and will probably achieve 2030 goals by 2027, the pace he's going. And it puts us in line as an investor as a conference attendee, what is your goal coming into this conference? It is really maybe too late, but maybe it's to understand the next phase. We're building out the infrastructure. We're taking care of our people. Seven new hospitals are being built. We're, we're ensuring that wages, the taxes, all the components that you, you expect in social development is taking place. We're much more than oil. People ask us, where is the oil money? And, and a simple answer is, would I rather some dollars in my pocket or my kids have to walk out on a mud road 
and then catch a, a bus to drive a good way to school, and they come home, they're tired, they've got to wash their clothes. I would want that road first. I would want that new school first. I would want the, the, the folks to, to be happy. And that's what our government has put in place in the first phase of transformation. So the, this conference is going to pivot the supply chain, the, the, the fact that we're moving aggressively in the agro-processing uh, arena. I mentioned to the U.S. ambassador the other day, you know, Dole, who is one of the major providers of canned goods in, in the CARICOM, Dole got two choices. They either could come to Guyana and set up a factory, or maybe we put them out of business with some local vendor. And, and the good part about but our investments over the last five years is that a local investor, going from Vichy to Nick Boyer to Aiden Hotel, the Alfonso, these are all locally funded investments. So we're proud of our private sector stepping up, uh, working with government. Government is there to enable the private sector, and our office is there to encourage and work with investors as you come in for this particular conference in February. You know that we will be there to guide you and how you can do a better job uh, in your investment. And ultimately, I repeat, the president said, we don't care if you make money. You make your money, you treat our people right, you pay your taxes, and we're all happy. Thank you very much. Uh, Kiana did announce that there are some significant technology transformations taking place on the conference properties and the V75 is the technology partner that's doing that and so it's my pleasure now to invite Mr. Ellen Marks who's the CEO of V75 Inc to make this presentation. And standing on all protocols observed, good day ladies and gentlemen. I believe what serves um, to lay the contextual foundation of what I'm about to introduce would be to introduce V75 Inc, just to spend a little time in terms of talking about what we do. So I'll start with that and then on, we'll, we'll head towards the unveiling of what we have in store. So V75 Inc is a homegrown, 100% Guyanese technology company. We've engineered conversational AI solutions as well as custom built enterprise software for companies worldwide. On the home front, we've worked with the Guyana Defense Force, several government ministries, the IDB. We've even worked with contractors within the oil and gas sector. We've worked with uh, numerous private sector entities. And now, we're proud to announce that we're working with the Guyana Energy Conference in terms of building this technological future that will power the conference as years go by. So the unveiling is really the culmination of months of hard work from our engineers at V75 Inc. It's also a lot of hard work with regards to our cybersecurity partners at Privateer Cybersecurity. And we've also worked in lockstep with the GEC team since day one. What this represents is a phase one release of a three phase delivery that will take us all the way to conference 2025, but it leaves a lot of scope with a solid technological foundation for us to evolve this solution conference after conference. But what it really represents is the Guyana Energy Conference's embracing of technology, their investment in technology, especially at this scale. It also represents the Guyana Energy Conference's patriotism to have done so with a homegrown technological company. And it also represents their commitment to excellence. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to unveil the Guyana Energy Suite.
our, our final and, and keynote presentation this morning is coming from the Honorable Vikram Barrett, Minister of Natural Resources of Ghana. Minister Barrett. First of all, I would like to echo the same sentiments from all who spoke um, before me and outlining the vision of not only the NG conference, but also our government and where our country is heading. So I'm indeed pleased to be here today at the launch of the 2025, I have to ensure I get that right, 2025 Guyana Energy Conference and Supply Chain Expo. And in saying that, I want to commend, first of all, congratulate Kiana on her assumption of the role of the Chief Executive Officer for this conference. And I'm sure Kiana will build on the foundation that was laid already in the last three conferences. Um, I have the confidence in our abilities, and already we are seeing um, many new aspects being added to this energy conference and supply chain expo. I would also like to thank the team, the, Mr. White and the, the team at the energy conference secretariat for their vision and insight, and also for exploring and always being willing to adopt and to showcase what Guyana really is about, and not only about oil and gas. I wish also, on behalf of the government of Guyana, to thank ExxonMobil Guyana and all the sponsors who will be on board, and uh, for their continuous support um, in ensuring that this conference grows to be one of the most premier energy conferences around the world. And I already think that we are achieving that status slowly but surely. I was looking back at our history as a country. And when people started to come to Guyana after 1492, it was in search of the El Dorado, the city of gold. That was what lured people to Guyana in those days. But what happened? We diversify into tobacco, into coffee, into sugarcane, into rice cultivation. We move away, not, we, we did not only involve in gold mining, but we went to bauxite, we went to manganese, we went to diamonds. And it shows clearly, it shows clearly that Guyana has never been an economy that was built on one single sector alone. And even today, as people come to Guyana in search of opportunities in the new oil and gas sector, we have a conference that will highlight opportunities across all sectors. So again, it shows that we are committed to diversifying our economy and not only to focus on one particular sector. And this is something I think Guyana as a new oil producing country that we are becoming a role model among new countries, new oil producing countries around the world. It is because we have not remained focused on one single sector only, but rather we have continued to grow and incentivize and to expand all the sectors. That today when we, when we launch our energy conference, it is not only an energy conference, but is a supply chain expo. Because all of these sectors are critical and important in building out the oil and gas sector in Guyana. And we are seeing those opportunities today. And I'm happy that our local private sector is taking advantage of those opportunities too. Sometimes I know we are very critical of the private sector not stepping up as much as they should. But we also need to recognize the ones who have really taken that bold initiative and step to invest in the oil and gas sector. So we want to call on more, more investment from our local private sector. We have created an enabling environment through the local content legislation, through government policies, through our partnership with ExxonMobil and the tier one, tier two contractors, so that opportunities are extended to local businesses. And I must say that we are pleased too to see that many companies 
coming to invest in Guyana today, whether the service is part of the Schedule 1 in the local content legislation or not, they are engaging local partners and they're seeking out local me members of the local private sector to engage them and to partner with them. And I think that is a plus for us. I think that is one of the objectives that we were seeking when we tabled the local content bill in the National Assembly and passed it. And I think that was one of the objectives, to have local participation in the oil and gas sector. And also to get our local private sector to expand in the traditional sectors. And one of those traditional sectors, and I mentioned earlier how agriculture has been the bedrock of our economy and continues to be so. And we have seen the expansion of the agriculture sector benefiting from the oil and gas sector. We have seen the expansion of the tourism sector benefiting from the oil and gas sector. Construction, manufacturing, these sectors are expanding and they're benefiting from the oil and gas sector. And that was the intention of our government when we passed the local content bill, I think it was on the 29th of December, 2021. Yes, 2021, if I can recall clearly. So today we have seen many local entrepreneurs, many local businesses being a part of Guyana's oil and gas sector. And when we were crafting our framework and the architecture, build out the architecture to manage the oil and gas sector, it was exactly to ensure that Guyanese play a part in the oil and gas sector. It was to ensure that we correct the mistakes made by other oil producing countries around the world. So much so that today, Guyana being a new oil producing country is being used as a model for new countries entering the sector. And I mentioned before we had ministers from Namibia, from Suriname, and from many other small countries that are now entering the sector, coming to Guyana to look at our model. And they've been working with us to ensure that they too craft their framework in a way that mistakes made in the past will not be made again by all producing country. And some of those mistakes involves the dependency on one sector alone. And we have worked tirelessly to ensure that we don't exhibit that kind of, or make that mistake in depending on one single sector. Many countries, because oil and gas is so lucrative and brings in a lot of revenue with it, they sometimes neglect their traditional sectors. But we know that oil and gas don't last forever, especially at this point in time. You know, sometimes we say maybe we are a bit unfortunate. Unfortunate in the sense that we discover oil in 2015 and not earlier like many other countries. Because when we discover oil, the pressure was already there on oil companies and oil producing countries. And nine years after, nine years after, nothing has changed. As a matter of fact, the only thing has changed is that more pressure is being added to oil companies and oil producing countries, especially with regards to climate change and cutting emission and the energy transition that Kiana spoke of. Sometimes we think that it's probably unfortunate that we only discovered in 2015. And then we criticize the government and the vice president for saying that our depletion policy is to get the oil out as fast as possible and to use the resources to develop our country, to build out the other sectors and to ensure that our people too enjoy a good life. But that should be any oil producing country's depletion policy. Because the mere fact is that the world is transitioning, whether we like it or not. So to hold an energy conference and not to discuss climate change and transition is basically shooting yourself in the foot. 
because the world is transitioning away from fossil fuel. Whether they're doing it as fast as they should, whether it's moving at the, at the pace we expect it or not, that's another question. Because I personally don't believe that the transition is taking place as fast as it should. And that is why in Kiana's speech, I heard the word just in front of transition. And that is key, and that is important. Now they've added another word to that. So it's just an organized transition, or just organized transition. And that is key because we in the south, the global south, we in the global south have contributed and are contributing significantly to the development of our world. At the same time, we have maintained high environmental credentials. And we are the least contributor to climate change or emission in the world. But yet sometimes we face the most pressure in the global south. So that is why a just transition is what we need to see around the world. A country like Guyana, we should be boasting and we should be screaming from the top of the roof. Because when many countries around the world are making commitment to achieve net zero by 2030, by 2035, by 2050, Guyana is one of the few carbon negative countries in the world. And maybe just one of two oil producing country in the world that is carbon negative. And that is something that we should be proud of. Because some countries, it will take them maybe another 30 years to achieve that. If they do. If they do achieve it. And it will cause them, it will cause them a lot to even achieve that. We are already at that position. Even though we are an oil producing country, if you look at our low carbon development strategy, that is our roadmap to our transition away from fossil fuel. By force, starting with the energy mix and then eventually transitioning fully away from fossil fuel based on our commitments. But when you look at the reality of the situation, can we actually achieve net zero by 2050? Can we fully transition away from fossil fuel anytime soon or anytime in the near future? You know, sometimes we need to be real. It might be good to give a nice speech and say we are going to transition, we are going to achieve net zero. But in real terms, is the world prepared and ready to transition away from fossil fuel? And many people honestly would say no, that we don't see um, uh, the, 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 the use of fossil fuel being, being, being ended or the use of fossil fuel ended at any time in the near future. And mainly because of a few points. Every day, governments like Hours, we wake up thinking how to improve the lives of people. How do we stop or reduce infant mortality rate? How do we keep our little children alive? How do we extend the lifespan of our people? How do we live longer? And if there are many other governments around the world like Guyana, it simply means that we will have less deaths at board, and people will live longer than they usually are right now. And that translates to energy demand. It is estimated that in another 20 years from now, 20 to 30 years from now, the world's population might grow by over 2 billion people, probably taking it over 10 billion. That translates to demand for energy. There are about half billion people in the world today, as we speak, who live without energy, who live without electricity, power supply, 
should we keep them in the dark? Or don't they deserve what we are experiencing too? That requires the demand for energy. Everyday government like ours are working to ensure that the people at the bottom, that they can elevate themselves and they can move to the middle, middle upper class and they can live comfortable and they can own not one motor car but two. And they can live a better life that translates to demand in energy. So sometimes we need to take all of that into consideration when we make all the commitments with regards to moving away from fossil fuel. As it is today, fossil fuel is the only, I think it's the cheapest, most reliable energy source. Most reliable. Because renewable energy comes at a hefty cost. And to date, the technology is not there to ensure that it becomes more reliable than the use of fossil fuel, sadly so. So that is the real world that we live in. So when we speak of transition, we need to take these things into mind. We need to bear it in mind. And again, we must ensure that it is a just and organized transition and not just a transition. So I think these are some of the things that we will discuss more in depth at the Energy Conference 2025. And as I think Alex mentioned, I don't know if by design, but it will finish the day before Mashamani. I, I, I think the organizers must be given some kudos for that. So it simply means that all our guests and all those who are coming to Guyana will experience Mashamani in Guyana and they will see a different dimension of our lovely country. I know that this year will be much bigger than last year for sure. And I know that almost everyone around the globe who is involved in the oil and gas sector looks forward to the Guyana Energy Conference. I'm sure Alistair will tell you the same. That anywhere you go in the world, people want to know what is happening in Guyana. And you know, I will close with this because I know I probably went over my time as usual. But in 2017, when I was an opposition member of parliament, I went to a conference in Dhaka, Bangladesh. I, I don't want to say it publicly, but it was one of the best countries I went to. <laughs> that's, why, that's why I whispered. it. <laughs> anyway. I went to Dhaka, Bangladesh, mainly because it is overpopulated. It's a city with 10, 12 million people, all right? And the only thing you can do is from the conference to the hotel, the hotel to the conference. That's all. I saw the conference hall and I saw the hotel room. Nothing else. So my experience wasn't good. Maybe others will have better experience. But when I was there and I introduced myself to anyone and say that I'm from Guyana, they said, oh, you're from Africa. That's the first thing, you're from Africa. I said, no, I'm not from Africa. I'm from South America, I'm from the West Indies. I'm from, I try everything almost. But because in Bangladesh, there are big cricket fans, I had to use cricket to explain where I'm from. But I still didn't think they figured it out. They just know that, oh, Brian Lara, oh, Chano, oh yeah, we, we kind of know where it is. But today you go anywhere in the world and you, you tell them you're from Guyana. Believe me, they know where Guyana is. They know where Guyana is today, and that is the difference. And that was 2017. Seven years after, the entire world knows where Guyana is. Seven years after our country, our little Guyana is on the map. And we have to thank, we have to thank our partners in Exxon and in CNOC who is here and the other players in the oil and gas sector for helping us in this journey too. I know many a times us along with them will come under a lot of heat, especially in the media. Some of it, um, I must say is not justified, or a lot of it not justified because of lack of knowledge of the sector or ignorance of the sector on some part. 
that we, we attract criticism that is not really warranted on the sector. But we need to recognize the role that the COVIs and the other companies in the other block and the government would have played in ensuring that we built out this world class, this world class sector that is being recognized worldwide. That today, almost everyone wants to come together and invest, or everyone wants to be a part of what is happening in Guyana. And that is what this conference will showcase. So again, I'm happy to be a part of this launch. And I know for sure that 2025 will be a bigger, better year for the Energy Conference and Supply Chain Expo. Thank you.